All right. Um, well, this video is to go a little bit more in depth with the explanation of how to spot this feminine and masculine uh, nouns. Okay, we are going to have more uh, detailed a more detailed explanation of how to spot them, and also uh, we're going to talk about how to make plurals. All right. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm going to help you out with your indefinite articles in case you don't remember. I know how, I know you know how to make them, but we're still going to go over that together, okay? So I know this, I know that's difficult, okay? But if you have rules to spot those, uh, you're going to be able to do a great job, okay? Remember that you have this uh, video about the school supplies on my YouTube channel. Maricelli. It doesn't mean that you're not going to go over your green paper with the vocabulary because you have more things there um, besides this um, well, school supplies vocabulary. All right. So, um, well, here's a list if you need to pause to use it for something. All right. Now, let's get to matter. Now, gender of nouns. Okay. So we know or you know that in Spanish has two gender categories for nouns, okay? We are, our nouns are either feminine or masculine. And these categories are not someone's decision, like somebody said, okay, let's make this a feminine noun and let's make this a masculine noun, okay? It's just something that goes with the nature of the word itself, okay? So it doesn't mean that, for example, we have here feminine and masculine nouns. Let's see if we can spot a pattern. We have computadora, silla, ropa, tizas, pegas, and mochila. And in the masculine side, we have borrador. We also have creyón, bolígrafo, lápiz, reloj, papel. So it doesn't mean that these words are just words for girls and these boys, these are words for boys because computadora is just a computer and we know everybody can use computers, not just girls. And same happens with silla and mochila, okay? Everybody can wear seat and chairs and wear boot bags, all right? It also means here that not all guy, only guys can use pencils and wear watches, okay? So it's just the word is like that. And it's available for us, everybody, to use it, okay? Use them, okay? Now, let's go with the... Um, let's go with the... Um, rules, okay? Now, you know that if your word ends in A, it's going to be feminine, and that's it. We keep it and leave it like that, all right? Now, we're going to add some other um, rules, okay? For example, we have the words ending in A. We have la mata, la casa, la rosa, okay? But if your word, your noun ends in T-A-D or D-A-D, tad or dad, are also going to be feminine. La mitad, la lealtad, la bondad, okay? And then words ending in I-O-N, like canción or habitación or reunión, you can say la canción, la habitación, la reunión. And those words ends in, that end in tood, okay, like la juventud or la gratitud or la longitud, right? You can say la because they're going to be feminine, all of them, okay? So ends in A. Tad or dad, I-O-N, and to, okay? Now, the masculine uh, way is more easier, okay, because the majority of the nouns ending in the following letters, loners, all right, are going to be considered masculine, the majority of them, okay? Let's say almost all of them, all right? So we have uh, arbol, as in, you know, L, and we say el arbol, or techo for el techo, or pan for el pan, or café for el café. Now we have amor for el amor, or lunes, like el lunes, or los lunes, because it ends in S. Remember, you have sacapuntas and portaminas, it works like that. Also, these nouns ending in ma, like trauma, or aroma, or sistema, are going to be considered masculine, okay? So loners and ma, all right? El trauma, el aroma, el sistema. 
Now, we also have some gender neutral nouns in Spanish, okay? Those that ends in ista or ente are going to be considered gender neutral, all right? So, generally means, it generally goes for uh, um, people, okay? So, artista or artist or agente or agent. They can, it can be a female or a male, and it doesn't matter, okay? It works in English and Spanish the same way. Well, in English, it's also... Is always gender neutral. But in Spanish, it's going to be, well, that's going to be our gender neutral uh, example. All right. Now, let's take a look at the number of nouns, okay? How to make plurals. The basic two rules are if your word ends in a vowel, you're going to make it plural by adding an S. So, computadora becomes computadoras. And then if your noun ends with a consonant, we add ES. So, borrador ends in a consonant, you add ES. Okay? So, let's take a look. Computadora changes to computadoras. Silla to sillas. Tiza to tizas. Mochila to mochilas. Pega to pegas. And ropa stays the same. Remember, ropa doesn't have a plural form. And then we have diccionario, diccionarios, bolígrafo, bolígrafos, lápiz, lápices, en reloj, relojes, papel, papeles, creyón, creyones. All right. And these are the example. This is uh, the chart to check it out. Okay. So singular nouns and then in all vowels and accented vowels, accented A, accented E, accented O, and accented U. Take a look. It's missing one. All right. So if your word ends in vowels and accented vowels, A, E, O, U, you just have to add an S. So anillo uh, becomes anillos, roble, robles, and café, cafés. All right. So if your singular noun uh, <laughs> ends in a consonant or accented I, see it's missing here, but it's here, you add ES. So we have pastel becomes pasteles and ají, ajíes. And if you're talking, if you're wondering what this word means is peppers. Okay. So, um, so far, okay. So now words ending in S by nature with two or more syllables. Okay. In this case, you're not going to do anything. All right. So your example will be el cactus, los cactus, or el viernes can change to los viernes. Okay. Friday and on Fridays. Okay. Now, if your word ends in Z, you're going to take that Z out and change it to plural by adding C E S. Okay. So arroz will change to arroces and cruz to cruces. All right, so it works with lapis lapises, or in this case, el sacapuntas, los sacapuntas, right? Because it ends in S, Z, you change, you keep. All right, let's continue now. You can pause and take a look at this and mm, just try to understand the chart by yourself, but it's pretty easy, okay? Now, I want you to do this by yourself first, okay? Figure it out first, and then we're going to do it together, okay? So pause your video, do it, and then go back to me, okay? All right, now, if, let's, let's answer this together. I hope you already did it, and you're not just copying from me. It says, practica, complete these words to make them plural, okay? So this is a vowel. So we just have to add an S for pegas. Creyon, all right, will change to creyones. And also, we're going to take out that accent mark from there. Pupitre ends in a vowel, and it will change to pupitres. Reloj ends in a consonant, so we're going to add ES for relojes. Lapis ends in Z. All right, so we are going to take out the Z and change it to CES for lapises, and we take out that accent mark. We don't need it anymore. All right, borrador will be borradores because borrador is, uh, borrador ends in a, um, um, oh, 
give me a sec. Okay, borrador ends in a consonant, so we have to add es. Libreta will change to libretas because this is a vowel, and then papel ends in a consonant will change to papeles. Marcador ends with a consonant and it will be con borradores. Sacapuntas ends with S, so we don't do anything. Cuaderno ends with um, a vowel, O, okay? And then we uh, add an S to form cuadernos. And regla is the same thing for reglas, all right? Pause it if you need to understand this better. I'm going to continue now. All right. So, our indefinite articles. Say, um, well, generally in the class I'll say, say you have this and you'll be, I have a computer. Okay, very good. In Spanish, that will be, yo tengo una computadora. And then for borrador will be, I have an eraser, or yo tengo un borrador. If you take a look at these particles in red here, all right, let me find this here and here. Okay, those are your indefinite articles. And then those indefinite articles are used to name non-specific nouns, okay? In English, they could be a, a, or an, or some when you have um, many items. And you're going to choose them depending on the spelling of the first word here. Okay, that's in English. Now, what are indefinite articles actually? Well, when you want to say something that is not specific. If I say, uh, pass me the pencil, all right, I'm being specific because you and I know what pencil we're talking about. And that will be a definite article. But if you want to say, if I want to tell you, pass me a pencil, all right, you can just pass me any pencil. And, you know, I'm not being specific about any pencil, you just bring me any pencils, and that's what a, an and a are, okay? But in English, you choose them depending on the first letter of your word. So you say um, an, when you, the first word, um, the first letter of a word is a vowel, or you can say a, if the first letter of a word is a consonant, okay? In Spanish, we're not going to focus on the front, but we're going to focus on the bottom. Okay, or the back part of, uh, or the ending of your word, uh, to be more exact. All right, so uh, your last vowel or how to end your word will determine if the word is singular or plural. Okay, so, well, obviously masculine, feminine, singular, or plural. Okay, for singular, we have an eraser there. Yo tengo un borrador. And then if we have a computer, we say, yo tengo una computadora. For plural, we're going to say, yo tengo unos borradores. And if we have some computers, we're going to say, yo tengo unas computadoras. So these words here, un, una, unos, and unas, is, I'm sorry, are going to be your indefinite articles in English, in Spanish. In English, you have three. You have a, an, and some. And then in Spanish, you have un, una, unos, unas. You cannot find a pattern between those two things because in English, you're going to choose them depending on how your word starts, okay? Or if your word is plural or singular. If it's plural, you just use some, like I have some erasers or I have some computers, right? But in Spanish, you have to take a look at for overall two categories gender if it's feminine or masculine and number if it's singular or plural this is a masculine singular noun borrador because it's it ends in r like loners so we're going to use un okay computadora is feminine and is singular you cannot see any s's here so you use una okay and then in the case of borradores you know borrador, and you know borrador is a masculine noun. But we added an ES to make it plural, so we are going to use a plural indefinite article, plural masculine indefinite articles. Same thing with computadoras, because computadoras is a feminine noun that has been added an S to make it plural, so you are going to use the indefinite article, mask, uh, feminine plural unas, okay? Let's let's check um, this, let's check this, this um, chart. Okay, so 
we know indefinite articles are the same to say a, an, and some. In Spanish, we are extra, so we have one more, okay, one more form, which I think this is easy too. I don't think this is very difficult. So if your word is masculine and singular, you're going to say un, like in, you know, un lapis, which means a pencil. If your word is masculino and plural, you're going to use unos, like unos lapices, which means some pencils. Now, if your word is femenino and singular, okay, you're going to use una, uh, as in una regla, which means a ruler. And if it's feminine and plural, you're going to use unas, as in unas reglas, which means some rulers. Okay, you can pause this if you feel necessary to check it out. And I think it's really, really easy because it's just, you know, the first two letters are the same for everybody. Un, una, unos, unas. Oh, be careful and don't say uno like uno lapis because uno is a game and number one. So we're, we're going to say uno like uno lapis. It's un, unos, una, unas. Check it out. Okay? Now let's do this together. Okay? You have this chart on your packet. So check uh, check on the bottom, Okay? of your page, I think 14, if I'm not wrong, or 16. All right, so <laughs> um, this is how we're going to do it, okay? So we're going to take a look at our noun. We're going to take a look and say, okay, if it's feminine, um, singular, we're going to check it and then choose our article una for una regla. Same thing with lapises. We know lapises, and this is a mistake here. We shouldn't have that um, as a mark, my bad. All right, so masculino is masculino and plural. Okay, so we say unos lapices. What about borrador? Okay, we said borrador is in R because loners, so it's going to be, yeah, masculine, all right? And it's going to be feminine or uh, singular or plural. In this case, it's going to be singular and we're going to choose un borrador, okay, for an eraser, okay? Tijeras is feminine and because it ends in A, also is plural, so we're going to say unas tijeras. Marcador, or marcadores, comes from marcador, ends in R, loners is masculino, okay? And we added this ES to make it plural, all right? Now, what is the article we're going to use? Unos, like unos marcadores. Carpeta, next, we can see it ends in A here, okay? So it's feminine or femenino and is singular. We are going to say una carpeta, okay? A diccionario ends in O. We say, well, if it ends in O, you know, it goes in the category loner. So um, we say masculino. It doesn't have any S, I can not see any S, so I'm going to consider it singular for un diccionario. And libreta is a word for notepad or, yeah, notepad. Okay, it ends in A, generally, and we added S to make it plural. So it's going to be feminine and plural for unas libretas. All right, so I think this is very easy just to have an overview of how to choose or spot our uh, how to choose our indefinite articles okay now you're gonna have this activity and I already did and this is just an example I'm not gonna go over this with you okay because I want to make this as short as I can but I have computadora computadora ends with a so it's femenino and singular so we Put it here. Let's do cuadernos really quick together. Okay, cuadernos is masculine, and we had a uh, we add an s to make it plural. So if it's masculine and plural, it goes with cuadernos, unos cuadernos, and we check this out so we know that we don't have to do that again. Okay, so I'm going to continue now with the last activity for you. Okay, with uh, words or sentences with tengo y necesito. 
okay? So we talked about this before. Tengo means I have and necesito means I need, all right? And we're going to write sentences with that, all right? So tengo is our subject and verb I have. And un is going to be our indefinite article and and our object is going to be borrador, which means eraser. Tengo un borrador is a perfect sentence, all right? Remember your capitals and your periods, please, when writing. This is very important, okay? So we have just, it's going to be just three things that you're going to write. Either tengo, if you have it, okay? Un, your article for borrador. Remember that borrador is going to tell us what is the article we're going to write before it, okay? Let's see these activities really quick. Now, you're going to label these pictures. We're going to label them together, okay, and write the uh, article they have. And then we're going to say we need them or we have them, okay, depending on your instruction there. So really quick, that is a reloj. And then for reloj, we are going to use un reloj, okay? If you don't want to see these answers, pause and then do it and then you can go ahead and check with me, okay? Now, the second uh, ones we have here, a folder and a binder, okay? So we have carpetas and then the article for that will be unas carpetas. In this case, we have shoes or zapatos. And the article for shoes is unos zapatos, because it's masculine, see? Unos zapatos, una carpeta, un reloj. What about this one? It's going to be tijera, and we have just one, so we say una tijera. And this is pega, okay? Una pega. And famous, sacapuntas, I know you love to say this word. All right, sacapuntas... It ends in S by nature, so it's masculine. And we have just one, so we say un sacapuntas. Now, let's say we need a watch. We say necesito un reloj. Let's say we need some folders. Necesito unas carpetas. Let's say we need some shoes. Necesito unos zapatos. And let's say we have some scissors. Oh, well, we let's say... Let's say Let's say we have a pair of scissors, okay? I know we say una tijera, tijeras, and you say scissors all the time. So we say tengo una tijera. What about if you have uh, some glue? We say also like a bottle of glue, tengo una pega, all right? Which just means like a bottle here. In general, we say una pega. All right, and then you have a you have an eraser. You say, tengo un sacapuntas. Okay. Now, um, let's repeat together. Necesito un reloj. Necesito unas carpetas. Necesito unos zapatos. Tengo una tijera. Tengo una pega. Tengo un sacapuntas. All right. Here, you're going to take a, a look by, at this by yourself. It says open your book bags and check out if you have it or need it and make sentences. You have like eight more, like eight of them in total. So you have this uh, English word, you translate it, and you make your sentence saying if you have it or you need it. Obviously, you have to say it in Spanish, okay? So I think that's it for us uh, right now. Um... We have tiny cards for you, and then when we come back, I promise, we can play quizzes or Kahoot uh, if, if you still want to play uh, this. All right, thank you very much for listening, and I hope you're well and healthy. Bye-bye.